have a question on the Matthew 24, 20. Because I... The Sabbath, yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, because, um, like, do you believe in the Sabbath? I was baptized Seventh-day Adventist, but I'm not... Um, I'm kind of trying to understand some theology things. I'm and so glad you brought that passage. I've been dying for people believe the Sabbath to quote Matthew 24, 20, as well as Isaiah 66. But Matthew 24, 20, this is another passage that Sabbatarians will quote to show Sabbath observance is binding till the end. Yep. Which shows they don't know the Bible again. Not you. I'm talking about them. Can you read it for us? This, uh, and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Right. Okay. Now, this is what they quote. Guys, understand that Bible perverter, the Bible pervert in a box, he'll quote this thinking it's going to help his case. See, Jesus says that when this happens, pray that your flight, that you have to escape from Jerusalem, does not take place when? Not in the winter on the Sabbath. Right. Make sure when Jerusalem is about to be destroyed. And you need to flee. That it's not in winter, it's cold, or in the Sabbath. Now, brother, can you tell me the time frame? What is he talking about here? What event? The siege of Jerusalem, right? Okay. So from Matthew 24, 1, all the way down, he's talking about the sign that not one temple will be left standing. Not one stone upon another. If we read context, right? Yeah. Okay. Read Matthew 24, 1. So why do you Sabbatarians quote 20? But ignore what the context is, because the context is about the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple as a sign of God's rejection of the Jews for rejecting Jesus and having him kill. Because, you know, Matthew 24, 1, because when they looked at the temples, and what did Jesus say? I tell you that not one stone will be left upon another. Right. And then they asked them when it will be the sign of these things and a sign of your coming. Right. Yeah. OK. So why did you ignore the first 19 verses and not see that supply? It's referring to Jerusalem being destroyed and the temple in 70 AD. Is that how we're taught to interpret scripture? The context has nothing to do with the third temple that will be destroyed when Jesus returns. There is no third temple here. It's not about the second temple. So that when Jerusalem and the temple are destroyed, you Jews pray it's not in the winter or Sabbath, so you don't violate the Sabbath. What does that got to do with his returning physically, bodily to the earth? Because it's talking about fleeing Jerusalem when an embankment is made to destroy the city and the temple, which happened in 70 AD. What does that got to do with after 70 AD that now we oh. Gentiles must observe the Sabbath till the end of the age? In fact, oh. let me tell you where the context really begins. Start at Matthew 23, read 37 to 39. Okay. Uh, o Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent here. How often I warn to gather you children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. What house is he talking about? The temple? You got it. See that your house will be what? Desolate. Okay, keep going. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay, so what did he just threaten them with? Because of their rejecting him. Your house will be left desolate unless you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay. And if you don't, you won't see me. Now, isn't it true that that's the week he's killed and then he's raised from the dead and he never shows himself publicly except only for his followers? Because after the resurrection, he doesn't show himself publicly. He only shows himself to his followers. So this was the last time Jerusalem saw him, right? Yeah, okay. Right? Because let me prove to you that when Jesus died, rose again, he never showed himself physically in full view of the public, only to his disciples. Open up Acts 10. Read for me 39 to 41. Acts 10, 39 to 41. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, oh, okay, but to the witness chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. Okay, so you see what Jesus said in Matthew 23, 39? You will not see me again unless you learn to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay. And they didn't say that, right? Because that was the week they killed him, correct? Yeah. Okay. So then when he rose from the dead, did they ever see him again publicly or only his followers? No, only his followers. So Jesus fulfilled that. He goes, you won't see me unless you repent, but you won't repent and therefore you won't see me and your house will be destroyed. Now go back. Matthew 23, remember, the original Greek manuscripts, there are no chapter divisions. So you have to realize from the context when one section ends and another begins. Well, Matthew 23, 37, 39 does not end there. It continues into Matthew 24. So what you're going to do is you're going to read Matthew 23, 37, 39, and then read Matthew 24 immediately. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. <clears throat> Sorry. The one who kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they didn't say that, so they didn't see him, only disciples that who believed in him. Now watch, right away, read, don't stop. 
Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. So what yeah. house was he talking about that would be left desolate? The temple. Because he's in the, the house, right? Yeah. And then watch. And his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all the things, all these things? Surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another. Oh, that shall not. listening to my answer to Matthew 24, 20. What's the immediate context all about? Okay, the temple of Jerusalem. Now let's read. So reread what Jesus said, and then all the way to 20. So that they get an idea of what actually he's talking about. And yeah. Jesus said to them, do not see all these things. Surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when will these things be, and what will the sign of what, what will one be? What, the time of Jesus' return? Or no, no, you misread it. Okay. Tell us what? <clears throat> Sorry, the what is happening to the temple, right? Verse so what three. are they asking? When will this be that not one stone will be left upon another? Yes. So that's part of the context, right? Yeah. yeah. They're asking, okay, you just said not one stone will be left upon another. The temple will be destroyed. When will this be? And what will be the sign? Reread that. Uh, the sign of your coming. And now, That's an excellent statement because I'm going to show you sign of your coming doesn't mean his physical bodily return at the end. Sign of your coming in judgment to destroy Jerusalem. I'll get there. But I want you to see what you did not note because you took the verse out of context because of the programming of Seventh-day Adventists. May the Lord save you from that. Right? Yes. Okay, keep reading now. Let's see what the what the context is. Okay, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and deceive many. And you will hear uh, wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations will not rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be, shall be saved. Thank God, yeah. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. See, that's where I got you, Sam. It's about second coming. Because it says this gospel will be do, do what? Uh, will be preached to the world as a witness to all nations. And then... Then the end will come. Okay. Right? Now I'm going to show you that was already fulfilled before 70 AD because I know how people distort this. Now pay attention to what Matthew 24, 14 said. Reread re -read Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay, so this is where the seven-day Adventists think they got us. See, it's got to be preached all the world. That had happened. That can come. I'm going to bury that line in a minute. But now keep reading to 20. Keep reading. <laughs> Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads this, let uh, them understand. Then those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on what the... What is he talking about? Jews living in Judea, right? Yeah. So he's going to say, when you see them surrounding the temple, the abomination that makes desolate, that's when you do what? That's when they flee. Okay, that's the context, right? Keep okay. okay. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight not be in a winter or on the Sabbath. Okay. That's the context, huh? Okay. But don't stop there. That was 20. Keep reading. For then will be the great tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. Mm -hmm. No, nor ever shall be. Keep going. And un unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, for those days will be shortened. Yep. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ. Or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and prof false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. But if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Exactly. For as the light comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming, coming of the Son of Man be. That's where people will trip you up. Coming of the Son of Man. They think it means physical bodily as opposed to coming in judgment to destroy Jerusalem. But we'll get there. I just want you to keep it. I'll tell you awesome. Or wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Mm -hmm. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Sign of the Son of Man. Now notice it's not him appearing, but the sign that he has come, right? Okay. The sign of the Son of Man will appear. And then what? And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn 
and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, see. So that means that means they're going to see him physically. No, okay. because if that's the case, you end up making Jesus a false prophet. Because I'm going to show you, he says the same thing about the high priest, that you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Did the high priest see him? But Jesus says the same thing to the high priest in Matthew 26, 63, 64. But before you do that, read all the way. Read all the way to 34. And he will send his angels with a great sound with a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds and even and from one end to the other. Keep going all the way to 34. No stop. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already come, becomes tender and puts forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Mm -hmm. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means. What generation? This generation. Oh, okay. So all these things are going to happen that generation, right? Okay. Yeah. But according to you, it's a false prophecy because that generation has been dead. Oh, okay. Reread Matthew 23, 34. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Now we know Jesus can't lie because in 35, what does he say about what he just promised? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But now let me tell you what Sabbatarians, some I mean, of they do this prophecy. They prove Jesus is a false prophet because that generation died. Yeah. And then not only that, but you remember Matthew 24, 30, 31. Let me show you. Guys, you got to listen to this because this is how they trip you that Matthew 24 is about second coming. Yes, Christ will return physically bodily, but that's in other passages of the Bible. This one is all about Christ coming to destroy Jerusalem and bringing an end <clears throat> to the Old Testament age and era. Reread Matthew 24, 30, 31. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven and all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he okay. will, you will see the Son of Man. Yeah. They okay, so see, that's why they're going to try to trip you. See, they're going to see him with their eyes. Okay, now watch. Go to yeah. Matthew 26, 63 and 64. But Jesus kept silent, and the, the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, it is as you said, nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting. Wait, he will see the high priest? Read 64. Nevertheless, from now on, you... You standing here will see what? Read it. We'll see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power coming in the clouds of heaven. Did the high priest see Jesus come physically? No. But according to the way the cults interpret Matthew 24, 30, 31, you will see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. I mean, see physically. Well, he said the same thing to the high priest. The high priest is going to see him physically. No, that's not what he said. Hmm. Okay. And he said the just generation is going to see all of this. Yeah. So you see what happens when you put the Bible in the wrong hands? You see the danger? Sola interp interpreta. Yeah, you, because you end up creating contradictions when are none. Because okay. I'm going to show you that the word see doesn't mean see with the physical eyes, but see meaning with the mind's eyes to perceive. To perceive. I want to show it to you in a minute. I'm going to give you the lexicon on it. But before I do that, before I do that, number one, did everyone see? See, I get, even I said the word see. See, see? Did everyone see meaning understand that Jesus says in Matthew 24, what he says to thy priest, you will see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. Well, the high priest and the Sanhedrin never saw Jesus come physically with the clouds of heaven. So that tells you, be careful of how even evangelicals interpret Matthew 24. Dangerous. Number two, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 34, this generation is going to see all of this. Well, that generation died. And even says, you high priest is going to see this. But he died. I'm going to show you there is no contradiction. Just be patient. But the one I want to deal with first is go back and read Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So see, that's where they're going to catch me. See, I keep saying, you see? I'm not saying you see with your eyes. I mean, you perceive, right? Even in English, we say, you see? Yeah. See my point? Okay. That's what they think they're going to catch me. See, the gospel has to be preached throughout the whole world. That hasn't happened. No, it has. Go to Romans 1.8. Now, I'm going to show you that the New Testament says the gospel had been preached throughout the whole world before 70 AD. This is why you need to learn how to interpret the Bible in its context or you're going to be dangerous. Because Paul writing in the 60s, he writes to Christians at Rome in Romans 1, verse 8. Look what he says. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. Wait, the whole world had heard about the Christians at Rome? The known world. Is that what it's Oh, so when Jesus says this gospel will be preached to the world, he wasn't on about the world as you know it. He's not about the world yeah. as they knew it. Okay. So was that already fulfilled in the 60s? The whole world had heard about Christians? Yes. So the whole world knew there were Christians, so that means they must have been aware of the gospel? Yes. Okay, now, I'll give you two more examples. Open up Colossians chapter 1, the entire chapter. Colossians oh. 1, read verses 5 to 6. Because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, 
as it has also in all the world. All the world? Yeah. The whole world has received the gospel already? Yeah. And is bringing forth. Wait, wait, wait. Reread that again. You must be on drugs, mister. <laughs> all <laughs> the world. Wait, <laughs> all is writing in the 60s again. Okay. And he says already 60s, this gospel has spread throughout the whole world? Yep. Damn. So much for that argument from Matthew 24, 14. The second coming, we got you, Tham. No, you didn't, you Bible butchers. You just don't know the Bible. Okay. You got yeah. it? Yeah. And this is before 70 AD, right? Yeah. So that condition that Jesus said had to be met, this gospel has been preached out the whole world, was already met, right? Yeah. And no wonder after that, the Jerusalem was destroyed. But finish Colossians 1, 5 to 6, and then you're going to read 22, 23. Because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth uh, of the gospel, which has come to you, it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is among you. Brought the whole world is producing fruit? The whole world. Damn. Now when the you finish whole world. 23. Uh, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God and truth. 22. In his body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Indeed, if you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and you are not moved away from the hope and of the boss of the gospel which you heard, which was preached of every creature under heaven. What? Oh the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven? Yeah. Damn. Finish it, friend. <laughs> of which I Paul become a minister. Wow. Okay. Wow. So Matthew 24, 14, when Jesus says, the gospel of the kingdom must be preached throughout the whole world, then the end will come. That was already fulfilled, right? Yeah. So it has nothing to do with the second coming, right? Okay. What about seeing the Son of Man? If you take it literally, Jesus said the high priest would see him coming in the clouds of heaven too, right? Yeah. That didn't happen, right? That was no. Matthew 24, 30. Because I'm going to explain to you what see means. Because I'm going to give you the Greek lexicon. You're going to open it up. Okay, yeah. everyone else. Okay, you're going to see that the word for see can also mean see and perceive with the mind's eye. You can read Matthew 24, 30 again. And here's the link for you. You're going to open it up. And I'm going to tell you where to look at. Like I'm going to show everyone else. Okay. And so... It had nothing new with second coming. So there is no Sabbath observance till the end of the age. He's talking to the Jews, who as ethnic Jews, knew that these events would happen in their lifetime, in that generation. And so he's saying, for your sake, pray it's not cold, so you don't freeze as you flee or the Sabbath. Because I'm going to explain something that seven-day Sabbatarians don't tell you. Okay, now read Matthew 24, 30 again. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, that word see. I just sent you the link in private chat. Okay. Up sonte. Up sonte. Do you see that? See, again, I said see. Okay. The word up sonte, guys, click on the links. Okay. 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 When you click on the link, up sonte, click on that one, the second one I gave you. It's the word orao. Orao. You see it? Yeah. Now, can you read for me the definition on the top, Strong's Concordance? To see, perceive. Oh, perceive. So it doesn't mean seen physically. Okay. And then and read the rest of it. And attend to. And there is usage. Do you have read the usage part, dude. I see, look upon, experience, perceive, discern, beware. Oh, I experience or perceive or discern. Now read the other definition by Health's Word Studies, the word orao. See often with metaphorical meaning. To see with with the mind. Oh, I so that has nothing to do with seeing him physically. Okay. Hmm. Perceive with inward spiritual perception. When he says they will see the Son of Man, meaning they will perceive and know that I have come in judgment to destroy Jerusalem and the temple. It has nothing to do with him appearing physically. That's what he was telling the high priest. You will perceive and know that I am reigning in heaven and I've come in the clouds. When I destroy the temple, I destroy Jerusalem and destroy you. Okay, now. So far, we got it, everyone. I just want to make sure everyone got it because we're going to unpack a little more. So it has nothing to do with Jesus coming physically bodily, hmm. right? Yep. Well, what about he will then send his angels? Read Matthew 24, 3, because I'm going to explain to you what that means. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. See, that's it. That's Jesus coming with angels from heaven. That's it. You're, we've destroyed you, you heretic. No. Let me now explain what Matthew 24, 31 means in the context of Matthew. The word angel, angelos, can mean a human messenger because it only means messenger. The same word is used of John the Baptist in Matthew eleven ten. 10. In Matthew eleven ten, 10, John is said to be 
God's angel who he would send ahead of Christ. Matthew 11, 10, Jesus speaking of John the Baptist, a human who's in prison. He goes, this is he of whom it is written. See, I send my, you, yours says messenger. The yep. word is angelos mu, my angel. Hmm. Let me show you the Greek here, because so, I know you think I'm a heretic, because my hair is always ticking. Um, angelos mu. Yeah. So what kind of angel is John? A messenger. Angelon, it's in the accusative, but angelos is the nominative. Ton, angelon, mu. And it's the word angel, right? Yeah. So wait, Matthew eleven ten. Jesus says, John is the angel that God would send. He called him an angel. But not in the sense of a spiritual being. Like, So that's where you're wrong. You're assuming the word angel only means spiritual being. Change your definition. That's not biblical. The word yeah. angel means a messenger. Yeah. At times, there are human angels, and at times, there are spirit angels. But yeah. get this idea out of your mind. Angel means spirit being. No. Angel simply means messenger, both in Hebrew and Greek. Okay. Okay. So is John the Baptist an angel of God? No. Well. Yeah. What's wrong with you, dude? I just told you angel doesn't mean... Oh, yeah. A spirit being. Yeah, not in this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can so, you stop defining it narrowly? Right. I just oh, here you go, buddy. Here's the Greek again, dude. You're making me have to teach you Greek, and I don't even know Greek. It's all Greek to me. Here it is, buddy. Click on it. Stop saying no. He is an angel. Can you read the definition? Definition. A messenger or delegate, either human. Either human, and it gives you the verses. Or yeah, or heavenly. So I'm gonna ask you again. Was John the Baptist an angel of God? Yes. Yes. So when Jesus says to you. Hey. You will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven and sending his angels. You know what he means? Messengers. He's going to send the human evangelists to go throughout the world and preach the gospel because through the preaching of the gospel, the elect are gathered to Christ. Okay. Has nothing to do with Christ returning physically bodily. It's talking about when the temple is destroyed, Jerusalem is destroyed, then you will perceive that I, the Son of Man, have come in judgment to destroy Jerusalem. And from that moment on, I will send my human messengers to gather my elect from all over the world because Israel will no longer be the people of God. The church is true Israel, the people of God. Okay. Do we understand, Do you understand what Matthew 24 is? So what in that passage shows you that Sabbath observance is still binding upon Gentile Christians after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD? Nothing, nowhere. So why do they misuse this passage? Because they don't understand. This is yeah. what the point was to Bible pervert in a box. You don't know the Bible. You're dangerous. You're a false teacher because you don't know. This book cannot be in the hands of just anyone. It can be dangerous. So what evidence can you give me that I, as a Gentile, who's not ethnically Jewish, should still keep the Sabbath? None. This is given to a certain people in a certain context. And I love you, man. Now you understand.